In previous videos, we saw that aldehydes can react with alcohols to form hemiacetals. We've already seen that monosaccharides have both types of functional groups. They have an aldehyde or, and they have alcohol functional groups. When a monosaccharide is in solution, the alcohol at one end of a single monosaccharide molecule can react with the aldehyde at the other end of the same monosaccharide molecule. Let's look at an example of this using the most common monosaccharide, D-glucose. In this case, we see that the hydroxyl group on carbon number 5 can form an association with the carbonyl carbon. As a result, we get two different cyclic monosaccharides. Their structures will be almost identical. The difference will be at carbon number one, which we call the anomeric carbon. The anomeric carbon is a new asymmetric carbon that used to be the carbonyl carbon. Comparing these two cyclic monosaccharides, we see that in one form, the hydroxyl group points down. In the other form, the hydroxyl group points up. We designate the form with the hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon pointing down as alpha D-glucose. In the form with a hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon pointing up, we designate this as beta D-glucose. These kinds of drawings of cyclic monosaccharides are known as Hayworth projections. When converting a Fischer projection to a Hayworth projection, if we have a hydroxyl group on the right in a Fischer projection, it will end up pointing down in a Hayworth projection. Monosaccharides of different kinds can form either five-membered or six-membered rings. If a monosaccharide forms a five-membered ring, we call that cyclic five-membered ring a furanose. If a cyclic monosaccharide is a six-membered ring, we call that a pyranose.